Snipers, you have to see what's happening to the cryptocurrency market this Sunday with Bitcoin testing 56,000 US dollars right now with 17 hours left to go on this weekly candle. I had to get this video update out to you guys. Notice how right now we're seeing this curvature and we're seeing some strength and it's the weekend, which means that the market's the most manipulated due to CME futures being closed and the likelihood right now that we can come up and test 58,353 is very high and notice how with Ethereum we did initially come down. We formed a huge wick coming down to thirty four eighty and now we are at thirty six oh four trying to retest this channel resistance to get towards thirty six fifty. If we break above thirty six fifty and Bitcoin moves to the side or moves up, the chances of Ethereum moving up towards the four thousand US dollar level becomes highly probable as well. And so we have to look at what's happening right now in the micro time frames. And here's another major reason I need to get this video out to you guys. If we look at the total cryptocurrency market cap chart, because we are a four dimensional channel, notice how we're testing this major structural resistance that actually dates back to when Bitcoin topped out at sixty four thousand. And we had this lower high form. We came back down, tested the 200 day moving average. And now we are testing this extremely important resistance level. And what does this mean for the cryptocurrency market with Bitcoin not really close to sixty four thousand, which was its high in May. But the total market cap chart is coming towards its May highs. Well, where's the liquidity coming from? Well, Shiba Inu forming some new yearly highs recently and some other altcoins moving to the upside, forming new all time highs. There's obviously some capital right now flowing into altcoins. The question is, is this chart going to break to the upside? And if that happens, what is Bitcoin dominance going to do? Because we know Bitcoin dominance is actually coming and testing above the 20 week moving average right now. Once again, 17 hours left to go for this weekly candle. Does this really make sense? So far, it does make sense. And if it walks like a duck and if it quacks like a duck, eight out of 10 times, it's a duck. And for those in our Discord group, you know, we've actually already taken over seven day trades today for Stellar, Polkadot, Linear Finance, Swipe, Kusama, all hitting targets, which shows us that there is certainly some volume coming into these markets. We have the best trade signals in the cryptocurrency market. The link is in the description below and our community has been on fire in the crypto chat. We have the number one crypto discord trading community in the world. We are going crazy in the chat right now with this type of price action. So let's just dive into what's happening here on the three hour chart. First and foremost, notice how we are trying to come up and break the recent high here of fifty six thousand one hundred. If we start to move above fifty six thousand one hundred, we can certainly say that we're going back into price discovery, at least for this short term rally, and that that fifty eight thousand three hundred fifty three dollar level comes back on the table. But more importantly, because Bitcoin has seen this strength, even if it does not come up to fifty eight thousand and it stays inside of this channel, which pretty much has a support of around fifty three thousand towards that fifty six thousand dollar level, the opportunity for Ethereum to move to the upside becomes highly probable just with a consolidation in Bitcoin's price above fifty three thousand. And so the question is, are we going to be breaking this market structural resistance, getting above thirty six fifty for Ethereum? Well, a lot of this will have to do with the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart. And notice how if we were to pull up this Ethereum to Bitcoin chart, by the way, I have removed it from our primary watch list because as I'm about to head out to speak, I'm going to be talking about how we approach the market in a very unique way, more unique than any other analyst I've ever seen in a four dimensional way. And I consolidated what really matters in a four dimensional analysis of the financial markets. And that's really the total market cap, Bitcoin and Ethereum, because they're both institutionally graded assets, being the fact that they're the only coins that have CME futures. And then, of course, Bitcoin dominance and the chart that shows altcoins outside of Bitcoin and Ethereum and then the revolving parts. So this is pretty much the three D aspect. And then the 4D comes in with watching the DXY, which is the strength of the dollar. And then the largest traditional markets, obviously the New York Stock Exchange and the Nasdaq. But I like to watch the S&P 500 because it excludes sectors. And then we've got the Nikkei 225, which is Japan's stock market. And then, of course, the Shanghai composite, the Euro 100. And then we watch 
the two biggest commodities or at least the most important ones gold and oil and so i just wanted to mention that i kind of switched up that watch list but you know we will pull up this ethereum to bitcoin chart because this does matter right now that we are actually below 65,000 satoshis and what does that mean well that means now we're in a range that takes us 20 percent down to 53,500 satoshis if we're not able to get back above 65,000 satoshis so i think that the first confirmation of the ethereum price moving above 3650 is going to be seeing strength back above 65,000 satoshis very important to keep in mind from this video if we continue further down then the likelihood that we're going to see ethereum stay below 3650 becomes highly probable so 65,000 satoshis is key right now for ethereum the question is who's going to move first bitcoin or ethereum if ethereum moves a lot of other altcoins will follow we really want to start monitoring the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart to really see where is the first move going to come. And then, of course, right now with this Bitcoin price action coming back towards 56,000, we are extremely bullish into this weekend. The question is, are we going to get this rug pulled? Well, let's look at this ascending support level that started at 41,000. We tested it at 47,000. And now guess what? We already tested it for a third time. Is it the final breath for Bitcoin to come to the upside or is this going to be where the rug gets pulled? Well, let's look at what happened when Bitcoin first went towards the $53,000 level. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. We came up and we had descending buy volume on a three hour chart. Remember, I had to move my face yesterday. I'll actually do it again. Watch if we remove this price action from the chart, the 19% drop we saw in Bitcoin when we tested 53,000, we can call that a rug pull. Notice how we saw the descending buy volume. And this is very similar to what we're seeing now. Look, if you look down here, notice how this volume was descending. And it's kind of hard to see because we have to remove the price action from the chart from where we dropped to see it. But there was descending buy volume through an uptrend. And then we saw the rug get pulled, which basically meant massive market sell orders and that brought Bitcoin down. So if we look at the current volume, notice how so far still we have descending volume. You can actually see it more clearly on the six hour chart. Notice how you can see descending volume and higher highs forming here for Bitcoin. That's a bearish divergence, as I said yesterday. This is going to be a big puzzle piece as well. It's the weekend. Anything could happen when we form these higher highs. That's also considered a bearish flag, right? But Bitcoin on the weekend can do whatever it wants. Is this going to truly turn out to be a bearish flag to test forty nine thousand seven hundred or is it just going to continue to upside? I think that either one of these scenarios are highly probable. Sometimes what we'll see is both of them happen and how that could happen is we wake up and we quickly come back down. And if that happens, of course, you're going to be getting that trade signal if you're in the discord to short, because that would be a very big money play, knowing that when you come down, you take the elevator and when you come up, you usually take the stairs. We saw that when we tested 53,000 and throughout this push to the upside, we've pretty much taken the stairs. I mean, this one point three billion dollar Bitcoin purchase on October 6th from an unknown buyer that obviously took the elevator up. But notice how when we came down from 53,000, we certainly took the elevator down. So more often than not, you take the elevator when you come down. Same thing that happened when Bitcoin topped out at 64,000. We ended up taking the elevator down once this consolidation was over. And so that's why short positions are also very profitable. But we really want to be monitoring, uh, you know, uh, the, the Bitcoin consolidation between 53,000, 56,000 right now, because that's going to really give us the best indicator of what's going to happen. And then with Ethereum, of course, we have this six hour bullish tail. It did close red, though, on the last candle. Question is, are we going to break above 3650? Once again, 65,000 Satoshis is the key to that. And just to quickly look at Bitcoin dominance on a smaller time frame. We're still at these higher levels, but we are below the 20 week moving average right now. We want to monitor this. If we start to move up. That could be a sign of concern. And that would also assume probably that the theorem to Bitcoin chart is coming down. I think that would be more likely if we were about to see a dump. And so if we see Bitcoin dominance come down, that's even 
a more positive thing to not see a dump because that gives a little bit of breathing room for all coins. But what I think is the most interesting out of all of this is the fact that Bitcoin dominance is coming up to test the 20 week moving average with the total market cap testing this major resistance. Because remember, in order for Bitcoin dominance to come up, there has to be a reason. And I've always assumed based on the patterns of the past, like 2017, 18, that the reason Bitcoin dominance would come above the 20 week moving average with strength like the DXY has done over the last few weeks is the total market cap comes down. But if we start to move up, it would be very odd that Bitcoin's dominance moves up with the total cryptocurrency market cap and other altcoins. And the reason I say that is because if Bitcoin dominance is moving above the 20 week moving average, the narrative of all coins also doing well would sort of discredit the fact that the total market cap is going to have to move higher with all coins because throughout the all coin season that we saw with the total market cap moving further up, Bitcoin dominance continued to move down. Notice here, May 2021, uh, you know, from April to May 2021, we formed this high. Look, April, we came up, we formed a high here around 2.259 trillion. And then in May, we formed a high of 2.55 trillion. And in April and May for Bitcoin dominance, notice how April to May, we were coming down. And so does that make sense? If the total market cap formed that new high, Bitcoin dominance was coming down. That's what's normal to see but it would be abnormal to see Bitcoin dominance move up with the total market cap moving up. So that's why we've been slightly concerned with this upside move and S&P 500 moving down and so forth. We're not going to cover the traditional markets on a Sunday. Futures markets will open later today, but that's kind of the full cake. Not to confuse you guys. I know there's a lot of revolving parts. You can always slow down the video, rewatch it if you need to understand it a little bit better. But very interesting price action here on our Sunday. I have to go speak at this conference with MM Crypto, Carl the Moon and Da Vinci on a panel. I actually might end up having the whole panel to myself because of some issues with passports and stuff. So if that happens. I might need a keynote, which is not a big deal. I've done it in the past. So we'll see. It's going to be interesting, but I'm going to head out there and thank you all for tuning into the Snipers channel this Sunday. Have a fun day. And until next time, by the way, I haven't slept in 24 hours. I'll see you guys soon. Snipers.